Welcome to Church of the Incarnation and our Sunday service of morning prayer. There is a leaflet for this service available on the homepage of our website, churchoftheincarnation.org. Our worship continues with the opening hymn. Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in his songs. For the Lord is a great God and the great Psalm 13, to be read responsively. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I have perplexity in my mind and grief in my heart day after day? How long shall my enemy triumph over me? Look upon me and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes lest I sleep in death. Lest my enemies say I have prevailed over him and my foes rejoice that I have fallen. But I put my trust in your mercy. My heart is joyful because of your saving help. I will sing to the Lord for he has dealt with me richly. I will praise the name of the Lord most high. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father and to, to the, the Son and, and to, to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. The first lesson is taken from Genesis. 
God tested Abraham, he said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. God said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled the donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the, pl the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to the, his young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out of his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he said. Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided.
the second lesson is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of the little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of them will lose their reward. Thus ends the lesson. Child ritual sacrifice is not a topic we like to talk about very much in church. We don't tend to have child ritual sacrifice discussion groups, and for very good reason. There is nothing redeeming at all in the thought or contemplation of the act. It's abhorrent. Yet, the Bible doesn't shy away from its discussion. Consider the story of the king of Moab in 2 Kings chapter 3, who, seeing the battle against the Israelites not going his way, offered his firstborn as a burnt offering. And we're then told, a great wrath came upon Israel, so they withdrew from him and returned to their own land. Or, we have direct evidence of child sacrifice in Jerusalem in Isaiah chapter 30. It describes a horrible place called Topeth, where those still honouring ancient Canaanite practice would engage in the ritualistic killing of children. Now, I do understand this is not what we want to be talking about in these early summer days after the last few months we've all been through. But there we have it. 
And as so very often, the Bible does not shy away from the abominable side of the human experience. We can take some comfort noting the practice is never condoned within the roots of our faith. Indeed, the name of the place Topeth became synonymous with the developing notion of hell in our own Christian theology. And in today's Old Testament reading, the sacrifice of Isaac, we have the very earliest command in the Bible that child sacrifice is just not on. That this morality tale of a startlingly willing Abraham and his terrified son Isaac indicates in this newly covenant, covenanted faith, barbaric ancient Near Eastern practices can be left behind. That Yahweh does not demand the extinguishing of the youngest of lives in any way. Within this new covenant then, there is a renewed faith that offers new horizons, new ways of being, with new practices of devotion and worship that sets new levels of conduct within the body faithful. It may be unfashionable to suggest these days, but here we have direct evidence that the emerging Abrahamic religion and the root of our faith is a civilizing force and a force that pushes forward and elevates the moral good. Tell your atheist friends that little singer, a zinger and see how that goes down. Much later on in the Old Testament and leaving behind the time of the founding of our Abrahamic faith in the consciousness of early human history, the question of child sacrifice rears its ugly head once again. But this time, with thankfully a much less dramatic resolution than our story from Genesis this morning. And there's no poor ram stuck in the thicket this time around either. It comes from the book of Micah. And I imagine many of you are familiar with the passage. It provides an illuminating look at the possibilities of human behaviour and the life faith calls us into. From chapter 6. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? What does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? Last Sunday evening, the high school youth group met via Zoom, of course, and we began to address what was going on in the city and the wider nation with regard to race relations, a dialogue about the movement Black Lives Matter, and the opportunity or chance at reconciliation, healing, and the finding of a new civic peace. I was encouraged by their witness, their truth-telling, and their at times brutal honesty. They reflected in their own individual ways differing narratives of what might be possible and what might not. And the challenges, difficulties and roadblocks we may all face ahead. I was particularly taken by one comment from one of the teenagers who simply said, all we can do is start with ourselves. It has to start with us and we have to work as individuals on our behaviour and let that begin to bring the change forward for all of us. I have to admit, I was taken aback 
for a moment by the profound wisdom and insight of this high schooler. It rings so true, doesn't it? That we have to start with ourselves and God willing, things will then follow. And Micah's prophetic words about that work and action perhaps speak more loudly to us today than perhaps at any other recent time in our collective memory. The imploring to practice justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God offers us a roadmap forward as we navigate these exceedingly tricky and turbulent times. Micah's three-point zinger, as I like to call it, is right up there with the most memorable teachings from our Lord and Saviour, I would argue, up there with the Beatitudes, the Golden Rule, and the relentless gospel call to look after your brothers and sisters by first loving yourself. <sighs> Excuse me. Like the tale of Abraham and Isaac, Micah makes it quite clear that we need to move beyond ancient practices of ritual sacrifice and slaughter, that there are new commandments uncovered and made manifest by new covenants with the people of Israel that move us all onto a higher plane of moral understanding. To walk humbly with God, practice kindness and seek justice without the killing. And we can take this into our days today without question. Imagine a world where any individual from the most powerful in the land to the most troubled and distraught, engages in an inner spiritual dialogue with the words of the prophet Micah. Imagine a world where we find ourselves more concerned about the life and prosperity of our fellow brothers and sisters, all children of God, rather than turning a blind eye to their death and their suffering. Simply imagine a world centered on the nurturing and abundance of life with people of faith focused on kindness and justice and humility under the easy yoke and light burden of their God. And with the leaders of those people of faith intimately concerned with any unwarranted sacrifice or needless death. Abraham and Isaac is a morality tale that calls us to a higher purpose. It calls us to a more civilised and balanced, a less brutal and death-ridden world. Towards the end of the Hebrew Bible, Micah confirms this call to life over death, to kindness, to justice, to humility under one God. And our gospel faith of Jesus the Christ breaks this out into the open for all to see. So let us all pay attention. Let us all start with ourselves as our incarnation high schooler reminds us. And for the love of the good Lord, let's get to work. Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. Let us stand and profess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. Let us pray.
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. Endue thy ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, Lord, keep this nation under thy care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with thy Holy Let us pray. Almighty God, who has built thy church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, grant us so that to be joined together in unity of spirit by their doctrine, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable unto thee, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, our one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and the lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, and all assaults of our enemies, that we may surely, trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father of mercies and God of all comfort, our only help in time of need, we pray for all those who are sick, suffering, or in any kind of trouble. We continue to lift up all those affected by the coronavirus, both here and abroad. And we remember those on our parish prayer list. Augustine, Tom, Leonore, Lou, Marjorie, Harris, Veronica, Stephen, Stacy, Ryan, Liz, Maya, Carla, Frank, Al, Jim, Joan, Roger, Cherry, Andrea, Nadia, Shagdar, Mihail, Pedmini, Joe, Tony, Macy, and Bud and those we name now in the silence or aloud. Grant that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in the loving care through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Eternal God, who hast knit together thine elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray for the faithfully departed, especially Douglas Eckel, Hugh Talbot, Mark Bellissimo, Dalton LaCointe, and Alice Welker. Grant that they may go forth from strength to strength in the life of perfect service in thy heavenly kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, hear the prayers of thy people and what we have 
ask faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for thine inestimable love and redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfaintedly thankful, and that we may show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to thy service and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Ascribe unto the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts.
peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.
this concludes our service of morning prayer. I hope you will join us again next Sunday, July 5th at 11 a.m. for a service of Holy Eucharist. If you would like to make your Sunday offering today, you can do so at churchoftheincarnation.org or you can scan the QR code, which will appear on your screen momentarily. Thank you for worshiping with us today.